Hi, my name is Konstantin Magnus and this is a tutorial on how to model effectively inside Cinema 4D by showing you some modeling tactics. So my first advice would be to use reference images. And you can integrate those in right in your interface by clicking on Window Picture Viewer. And it's called Picture View because it's not only capable of displaying your renderings but also opening up any other image you have on your hard disk. To have some more room, just click on this little icon and you can integrate the image by just dragging it over here. By the way, you can collapse this picture by middle mouse clicking on this rough surface or left mouse clicking on it to open it up again. Also, backdrops can be quite useful. In the orthogonal views, you can just uh, click on one of those frames so it gets a little darker and go to mode view settings and then you would just switch to back and load in some kind of blueprint you downloaded from the internet or maybe something you drew yourself because that way you can't really get out of proportion apart from that it's always a good idea to measure stuff if you have the object available oh and by the way if you don't want to see the backdrop for a second you can either make it more transparent or disable it altogether by clicking on show picture. To keep your scenes usable you should always name your objects. I know this is sometimes a bit hard because you're right into modeling but it would make sense to just name stuff uh, accordingly uh, to what you've done and also stack objects together like if the handle is a part of the door then we would just assign this maybe like this and you can also use null objects as folder structures so if this is a room you can just put those objects in there you can use as many null objects as you like and you can also stack them into each other in unlimited ways if this way of um, organizing your scene is not enough you can also have a look at layers you can just double click inside layers, name them. You can also um, stack them into each other and you would then in the end just assign objects to your layers and make sure it, that that's, if it's not just the top thing you selected but all of them by middle mouse clicking and dragging them there. Now how to remove them from here? You can either left click right inside the icon and say remove from layer but this only affects the one you clicked on but you can also highlight them all by either dragging a frame or middle mouse clicking and then you right click and say remove from layer you can also colorize the layers the way you like the advantage here is that you can now once you assigned them you can make them disappear in the viewport make them disappear in the rendering or make them disappear in the object list but you can also lock them so you can't do any mistakes on them. Let me just show you a working structure. First of all when you open up the document you shouldn't um, have like hundreds of objects listed there but rather like the main stuff that is going on. In my case it's an object and the studio. Inside the studio are the cameras I like to use. Um, light sources and maybe the floor and that's about it. In the other folder every part is listed like the tank, additional parts, the bars and so on and if I have parts within parts then just name them all so some other person will also know what you did. Well, let's go more into modeling and my first advice would be to only use as few polygons as possible because later on it will add up so the first thing you should do once you start with an object is to think about how many divisions you need whether you need additional uh, features such as caps and so on to and the rule of thumb is to keep it as simple as possible another advice is to actually plan your topology so for example if you wanted to model some um, some gear here you can tell that I only used a minimal structure 
of one lane I needed for the tooth and one which is empty and again one that is used like so. So you would never just set up some geometry and um, convert this and then start thinking how is it subdivided but this is something you should manage beforehand so you would first count the number of teeth then you set up the tube accordingly or whatever object you have and then you could go and once you defined the dimensions you could then start after conversion to extrude any other face that way it is going to be successful but it won't be if, if you start without thinking. A really important tip, especially for beginners, is to always check what you're doing after each step. Like You should always make sure you didn't um, select any polygons on the back side of your object by mistake, which happens easily if you have um, here options and only select visible elements Deactivate it, then it's kind of shooting through, so the backside is also selected. If you don't notice this, you will notice later on and it will look really, really bad because this is not what you wanted. So, in general, after everything you've done, every few steps, you should just look, turn around your object from all sides, look at it and check for mistakes. Also, you should know what's the goal for your um, object you're creating, like whether it's something low poly, which should work in real time, in say a video game, whether it's an object uh, which is supposed to be subdivided, like this, uh, which can be used, for example, in medium range, or whether you need something highly detailed for the foreground, with all the details on it or um, maybe you even need a really really regular mesh for example like you can see here with all quads because you need to deform it later on or you need to do some kind of um, effects on it so that's really different kind of um, things that are needed and you should know that before you start modeling Another advice is to actually start working in flatland. So let me just give you an example. Um, if you would be to start off with a solid object, just because the final result should be solid, uh, you will have a hard time when modeling because it may be harder to get, for example, a hole inside this structure here than if you were to just start off flat. produce some kind of hole in there with only the few polygons we have right now which is a wonderful situation because it really is way easier to control and once you solved all the issues you may have with your topology in here you can still extrude it afterwards like, let's just pretend I wanted to have a structure like this. I mean, now the topology is solved, and if you wanted to, you could copy paste this just to make sure you have a backup, and then you just extrude it all. Make sure you have the downside closed also, and that's probably the faster approach to creating solid objects. Also, what's crucial to modeling is not so much all the tools you may find here in the modeling tab, but um, it's actually the order of execution, which I mean the order in which you do things. That's the secret really, because in most cases it's just about extruding, deleting polygons, maybe beveling in the end, but that's pretty much about it. Um, on the other hand, if you're choosing the wrong order, like the wrong way of doing things, um, then your life will get much harder. 
let's say for example this cylinder is your um, outside measurement of an object and you decide later on to um, extrude stuff inwards like you would like to have these loops here pressed inwards by extruding them you will see stuff is overlapping and intersecting and there are even tougher examples of how things can go wrong so in this case the better way of executing things would have been to first create just the inside surface and then extrude what you need additionally so you go from inside to outside that way you could have you, we avoided this problem we had with the intersections and again this is just an example like the, the order in which you do things is incredibly important in, in modeling also before starting a modeling project you should increase the steps the under steps you can take so when you're modeling something more complex you may be happy that you can go back up to maybe a hundred steps or so that way you can just simply go to edit undo a hundred times until everything is okay again as we're talking about undos like there may be some situations in which you don't notice miss your mistakes right away let's just pretend we messed this up by mistake a few minutes ago and I see many of my students who would try to fix this um, just because they invested so much time on this uh, part my advice here is to just don't fix it but instead repeat the whole thing it feels hard at first but believe me the second time you try it the object will turn out better with a better topology and you will be much faster so it's a good thing to actually throw stuff away and reset it up from scratch as we are talking about redoing stuff in some rare cases I even have a, like um, the need for something I would like to show you here let's just pretend I model something and some parts of it are wrong but others are correct then you can basically just copy paste first copy this object then go back in time do s some stuff differently and then paste the version you had before so that way you're basically able to use both parts so I could delete parts of the last version I had keep the stuff that's good and interesting and work with the corrected version in, com in conjunction it's also a good idea to focus on complex areas first so what I mean by this is if you analyze your object and you see that two cylinders are touching each other or there's a rather complex um, shift from one shape to the other then I would first um, focus on this the other thing is um, to isolate problems like if you if you see that it may be a bit harder to integrate the logo into a given structure then why don't you do a kind of dry run by just setting up in a separate uh, document just this one topological problem and try to find a solution for this once you're con confident with it once you know you get this done you can go back to your whole project and work it in there another thing you should know are selections once your object has been converted you know that you can access polygons edges and points first thing which is quite useful is that Cinema 4D is saving each selection separately which can be used strategically and you can also convert uh, say a polygonal selection to a edge selection by just holding down shift and clicking onto edges if that is not enough there's also an option to expand selections and to uh, decrease selections just go to select and you will see grow selection and shrink selection as well as their shortcuts so let's grow it and shrink it 
once you're more experienced, you will find out that these commands can be quite useful. Also, if you have a selection you would like to use later on, but not now, you can just say sec select and set selection. That way this selection is saved and can also be named. Now I can go on modeling. Let's say I would like to do this and extrude it outwards. And then in the end I double click on the selection and it's still active. Another advice I would like to give you is to keep objects parametric as much as possible. So for example if you have a cube here um, which looks like this. It got deformed by a bulge deformer and is put into a subdivision surface and this object is kind of live so I could still change parameters as much as I like. I can also change its dimensions and whatnot. And before you convert this, at first think about if you even need to convert it but if you do just click on the top object and right click and say current state to object that way you keep the original the way you've built it with all the deformers and there you have another object which is just a kind of uh, polygonal object with which doesn't know any parameters anymore but got editable Another tactic is to model a, an object perfect, like it would be an ideal case. And then once you finished with the model, you can bring in some detail by using, for example, a FFD deformer, which stands for Freeform Deformer. And you can later on then bring in some detail by just, um, for example, moving points in a little so you just have some more random shape without messing up your actual object. And also keep in mind that you can still use textures to get more detail into your model. For example, if you look at the floor here, it w wouldn't make much sense to model each plank here. Of course it would um, bring high quality, but Maybe if it's just a few millimeters, you can achieve almost the same result by just quickly using a texture here. And the last tip is abstraction. No one is forcing you to model something totally the way it is, but you can also take some liberties here and there and just simplify your models so you get a fast result with good topology, which, which will look almost like 80% of the original.